called unto holiness. Kingdom Pattern 1 Peter 1 verse 15 to 16 But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. From Bible perspective, holiness is to be set aside to serve God, and it also means moral and religious cleanness or sacredness. The priests that ministered before the Lord in the temple had inscribed on their turban the word, Holiness unto the Lord. This serves as a reminder to the children of Israel, that unlike the surrounding nations who served idols, the children of Israel worshipped the holy God. Exodus 28 verse 36 to 38 You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet, and you shall put it on a blue cord, that it may be on the turban, it shall be on the front of the turban. So it shall be on Aaron's for it, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallow in all their holy gifts, and it shall always be on his for it, that they may be accepted before the Lord. God gave his law to the children of Israel so that they can be holy unto him. The Israelites were to honor their parents, to observe the Sabbath, avoid idolatry, worship, and offer acceptable sacrifices according to God's instructions, they were to provide for the poor, not to steal, or cheat, and not to follow the customs and rituals of the surrounding pagan nations, etc. Read Leviticus 19 verse 1 to 37. Those who worship God must be holy in their conduct. We must have the willingness to stand out as different, if we want to be holy unto the Lord. As Christians, we should avoid sub-activities that would interfere with our worship. Just like the law helped to distinguish Israel from the surrounding nations, we should also by obedience to the word of God, distinguish ourselves from people whose beliefs and lifestyles conflict with Bible teachings. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 to 16 Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? For what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 1 Peter 4 verse 3 to 4 For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lusts, drunkenness, rebel rise, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. As Christians, we can be like our holy God by imitating his characters, and strive to become holy in all our conduct. When people see our good conduct, they will move to glorify Jehovah. 1 Peter 2 verse 12 Having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. 1 Peter 1 verse 15 But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Jehovah gave Israel good, holy, and righteous law. The children of Israel were expected to prove themselves holy, by complete obedience to the law of God given to them by Moses. The law of God unlike any other law, is good, holy and righteous. Exodus 19 verse 5 to 6 Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Romans 7 verse 12 Therefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. The law given by God was to regulate their worship, and give guidance concerning matters of diet, sexual activity, and hygiene. The law was intended to make the children of Israel to be physically, spiritually, mentally, and morally clean before God. Living a clean and holy life. As Christians, we are required to be morally and spiritually clean, even though we live in an unclean world. 
The world we live in is filled with people who practices different forms of uncleanness, such as deceitfulness, dishonesty, sexual immorality, lewdness, foul languages, and all kinds of immoral escapades. 1 Peter 4 verse 14 to 16. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. Ephesians 5 verse 3 But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9 to 10 Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. By the truth, the children of Israel were commanded by God to observe the Sabbath by ceasing from normal labor, so as to give attention to spiritual matters. As Christians, we should imitate the example of Jesus Christ who observed all the laws of Jehovah, even though we are not under the law, we can benefit from the way the Sabbath was observed. We should buy the truth, meaning to invest in the truth by buying out some time from our daily activities, in order to give more attention to spiritual matters. Proverbs 23 verse 23 Buy the truth, and do not sell it, also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Leviticus 19 verse 3 Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths, I am the Lord your God. Luke 4 verse 16 to 18 So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18 The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You buy the truth, when you sacrifice your time to give attention to the truth, but you sell the truth when you disregard the truth. Examine yourself, if you need to make adjustments in that regard, then habitually set aside time to make spiritual matters your center of attention. When you do that, you will develop a healthy personal relationship with Jehovah God, which is important for holiness. Exodus 31 verse 12 to 13 and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbaths you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. Hebrews 2 verse 1 Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Regard Jehovah far above all. Any Christian who desires to be holy, must make sure that nothing or no one else come between himself and his relationship with Jehovah God. As a Christian, you must avoid any action that would discredit or profane the holy name of the Almighty God. Isaiah 57 verse 15 For thus says the High and Lofty One who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Leviticus 19 verse 12 And you shall not swear by my name falsely, nor shall you profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. Exodus 20 verse 2 to 3 I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage you shall have no other gods before me. We must not allow our interest, or that of other people to come first, but we must at all times give priority to our relationship with Jehovah. Leviticus 19 verse 23 to 25 When you come into the land, and have planted all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as uncircumcised. 
three years it shall be as uncircumcised to you. It shall not be eaten. But in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy, a praise to the Lord. And in the fifth year you may eat its fruit, that it may yield to you its increase, I am the Lord your God. Just like the inscription on the turban of the high priest, reminding Israel that holiness belonged to Jehovah, we must likewise always remember, that our God Jehovah requires that we remain clean and holy unto him. Exodus 28 verse 36 You shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of a signet. Never forget that the reminder, holiness belong to Jehovah, is still appropriate for us today. The Good News The Gospel in a Nutshell Human inherited sin and sinful nature as a result of the sinful disobedience of the first human, Adam and Eve, and the punishment for sin is death, which means separation from God, the source of life, Romans 3.23, we cannot earn our salvation, for this reason Jesus Christ came into the world fully God and fully man. He perfectly obeyed God's law and perfectly fulfilled God's will. He died in our place and as our substitute, paying for our sins. He rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven. He will one day return to the earth to establish his kingdom. If you truly repent from sinful ways, believe and accept Jesus Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior. You will be saved from judgment and spend eternity with God. Remember, Jesus is coming soon, are you ready? Be the first to know when new videos are published. Please like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notification bell beside the subscribe button to be notified of new releases. Kingdom Pattern at www.youtube.com Crossway Christian Ministries 2 at gmail.com This is Kingdom Pattern, a ministry of Crossway Christian Ministries.